How we doing? Hey, Diddy, how was uh, practice today? Felt good. It was like energy, a lot of people flying around. So uh, it was a typical practice here. I mean, uh, it's been a good year. We've been practicing good, and that's been part of the process. Like, we've been having fun. So it helps us translate onto the field. What's the vibe like with the guys this week heading into the last last game of the regular season? Just like any other week, we focus on the next one. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just focus on going 1-0 every week, and it's got us 11-0 so far, so we're just going to stick to the rule. Does it, does it mean anything extra to be able to go 12-0 when, when out in the regular season? Uh, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's, the, that's the ultimate goal. But you know what I'm saying? Like I said, we just got to do what we've been doing, uh, taking one day at a time and winning the day. Diddy, do you f- hear, like, the fans and, like, the North Texas fans and the UTSA fans, they kind of don't like each other. Do the players kind of see all that stuff? Uh, I'm gonna say that. I mean, like I said, we just look at it as the next game because, like, we get too much into that. It takes away from our plan, our game plan, all that, and saying it just makes crazy problems in itself. What jumps out about North Texas? The things that they do well that you have to be aware of. Uh, they're a very good rushing team. Uh, they're like fourth in the nation, I think, and uh, it's gonna be a, a big battle because uh, I feel like that's where our defense has been tested more times than not is in the run. So I feel like that'll be a good challenge for us, and we're looking forward to. It. They have a lot on the line in this game with needing to win to get to bowl eligibility and things of that nature. What kind of kind of mental approach are you expecting from them or kind of the intensity that they're going to bring? Oh, we know they're going to come out and play hard just, uh, just because, like you said, their season is on the line. And uh, we wouldn't want to go play in a bowl game. But uh, like I said, for us, to, uh, for us to, you know what I'm saying, do what we want to do, we have to just keep going day by day. We got to uh, stick to the root, and I feel like we're doing that. We're, we had a good day today. We had a good day yesterday, and I feel like one more good day, it just – build a solid week together. Yeah, what are your group's motivations to kind of rise to that intensity that they're going to bring? Because people might say, you guys have already locked up the title game and things like that. How do you kind of rise to that level that, you know, they really need this win? How do you guys get to that spot as a team? Uh, every game I try to tell the defense, I say they can't be uh, more excited to play than us. So, like, uh, take that mindset to the field, and I, I feel like if we're more excited to play, then we could almost outplay anybody in the nation, I feel like. How about for your defense overall? I know Coach Trailers talked a little bit this week about tackling. You know, where do you stand on that, or how do you feel about your tackling effort overall as a group? Yeah, I feel like we did miss a couple last week, uh, a couple criticals in some some cases. But uh, it's part of the game. Uh, we're going to fix it, get it cleaned up, get better. So uh, it was good film to look at from last week. A lot of things we got to correct, get better at. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it, it, you got to have games like that, just, you know what I'm saying? To make you go back to the fundamentals, just regular tackling, you know what I'm saying? We got the tackle circuit yesterday, and something we needed, we hadn't hit on in a while, so it was good. Is that a tough thing to clean up? Because I know you don't want to be too physical and take a toll on your guys' bodies in practice. How do you address tackling without kind of wearing yourselves out? Um, like like you said, it's, it's how we emphasize it. It's not like we're just going 10 yards apart, ramming into each other, but it's just uh, more so the fundamentals, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you wrap up, uh, eyes in the right place, head inside, you know what I'm saying? Right side, stuff like that, little things, you know what I'm saying? Clean it up. Dede, you've been in this program for a while. Did you ever think a team could be in this position where you guys have had so much success this season and have a chance to go 12-0? It was always a dream. I'm not going to lie, but to see it come to reality is kind of crazy. But uh, this is by far the most, the, like, I wouldn't even say most talented, but we got some talent, but it's just the best team I've been a part of, like, just – like coming together, sticking together, and, and really all believing in each other and the same goal we want, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's really beautiful to see like everybody's just stand on the same page, like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody has their problems, but we put those aside and, uh, you know what I'm saying, all for the team. And, and it's really showing, you know what I'm saying? We play like we love each other, and that's, that's how we really feel about each other. What's it been like for you being such a big part of, the, of so much of that success? Um, I'm just happy to help where I can, man, you know what I'm saying? For uh, for me, I didn't play a lot uh, in those early years, so actually being able to be out there and contribute and to be part of this history is just, I can't ask for anything more. You guys have been playing in some pretty loud environments in the Elmo Dome the last few weeks. What is it like as a defense? How do you have to adjust communication to, to make it work in that kind of setting? Um, communication is key, especially in that, because uh, like I said, the past few years, it. Uh, we really, hadn't had, we really hadn't had that atmosphere in the dome, but, like, uh, who wouldn't want to play in that? You know what I'm saying? That's what you live for. So, like, when we get it, it's just emphasizing communication. We have to be on the same page. We have to uh, we have to really be locked in, you know what I'm saying, because the crowd can get pretty loud. Man. It sounds like you guys, like, switch to hand signals, basically. Do you approach it totally differently than you would when it's a quieter atmosphere? 
Uh, uh, not really. I wouldn't say that. I, like I said, I feel like we're all locked in. So even if uh, even if it is kind of loud, you know I'm saying we're so locked in to where we know the checks, where we don't have to check as much. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, uh, like I said, uh, the free safeties, me, AP, uh, Shot, uh, Jamal, Sam, we have a good relationship, and we. Uh, I say I say we connect good, so uh, that helps with the transition. You know what I'm saying? The, uh, the adjustments, all that. I know, for, like for example, UAB got you guys for a couple of deep shots, and Coach Trailer was saying it comes down to that communication part. Yes. Is, was there anything that kind of jumped out about those plays, or that you guys can adjust? Uh, it's just um, I would say bad eyes and a couple of them, and uh, like I said, it's just stuff we got to get better at. You know what I'm saying? They they took advantage of a weakness we had. I felt like in that play or in that situation, and. Uh, good job to them, but uh, like I said, we just got to get better. We just got to uh, learn from it, and, uh, make sure it doesn't happen again. Day Day, I wanted to ask you about the Roadrunner wide receivers. You get um, you get to see these guys in practice every day. You got three pretty good ones that have had kind of breakout seasons. What What's your perspective on, you know, Zakari, JT, and, and, and Josh? Uh, so I was here before all three of them, and just getting to see how they grew. Like, Cephas, I don't know if y'all remember uh, when he was in the 80 number, but when he went from that 80 to that 12, he just turned into a different monster. And then JT, he's it's crazy. He's one of the most crazy freak athletes I've ever seen in my life, the way he just jumps and he has a knack for the ball. Like, he, if you throw it to him, he's going to come down with it. And then Z, he's just he's one of the most natural receivers I've ever been around, the way he runs routes, catches the ball, and, and runs after the catch. It's just it's, it's pretty amazing to see. And uh, going against receivers like that in practice, it helps me in the game because, you know what I'm saying, uh, I feel like, it's not many receivers I played this year that are better than those guys, so it, it helps a lot. It really does. What what changed with Cephas? You said there was kind of a, a switch that flipped at some point there with the the number change. Uh, I would say it's the number change. I just I right. feel like he growed up a lot over that that uh that first year here. His first year here, he had a pretty good season, but that next year he did just a monster season for him. I'm saying compared to the year before, and I feel like uh, maturity. He stepped up and uh, like he's a leader. He's a leader now. You know what I'm saying. And I feel like that uh, that just all, all the maturity and the uh, stepping up, it, it really helped him to evolve his game like that. All right. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it.